This is a pseudo-scorpion. I found it on a lumber board that was unfortunately brought into my house last fall. The reason it was unfortunate that these boards were brought in was that the boards contained some bugs. In fact, a month ago from now, I found a tick crawling out from where the boards had been. Ticks are a big problem in New York State, where Lyme disease that tick spread is quite common. Fortunately, this pseudoscorpion is not a tick, although its body looks a lot like one. Pseudoscorpions are harmless to humans and pets. However, pseudoscorpions are sadly not harmless to their prey. They eat springtails, mites, carpet beetle larvae, clothes moth larvae, thrips, ants, flies, book lice, and other bugs. My previous YouTube video was about clothes moths and carpet beetles in my house, so it's possible that's what this pseudoscorpion was eating. I've also talked about mites in my house, or maybe the pseudoscorpion was eating something else altogether that was on the board, or maybe it was just resting from the winter. Pseudoscorpions can't see very well, so they employ sensory hairs on their pedipalps for hunting. The pedipalps are the crab-like claws in the front. This article explains that, quote, when a small insect brushes against these sensory hairs, it triggers a reaction by the pseudoscorpion to seize the insect. Most pseudoscorpions have poison glands in their pincer-like claws, which they use to paralyze prey. They inject saliva into the victim. The pseudoscorpion feeds on the liquefied contents, like a spider or scorpion." End quote. Despite harming their prey, pseudoscorpions may have some of the better lives among invertebrates. They develop over 10 to 24 months, and adults can live 2 to 4 years. That said, as with most invertebrates, there's high early mortality for offspring. Females lay 20 to 40 eggs in one brood, and there may be many broods per year. But in a stable population, only two of all the eggs that a female ever lays will eventually reproduce, and most of those offspring will die young. This page explains regarding the pseudoscorpion nervous system that, quote, the nervous system is typically arachnid and strongly cephalized. Pseudoscorpions usually have two or four eyes, but occasionally have none. Most species probably have well-developed hemoreceptive senses. The most important sensory system is the reception of vibrations. Long, specialized CT, trichobothria, especially on the pedipalps, are sensitive to very small movements of air." End quote. I'm always conflicted about what to do with predators of invertebrates. Each predator causes immense short-term suffering to many prey animals. And killing prey early may mean more total deaths if the prey population is bottom-up limited by food, because the prey food has to be eaten eventually and killing prey just slows down that process. On the other hand, if predators do reduce populations of prey bugs, then maybe more of the prey's food will be eaten by fungi or bacteria, which I consider to be less sentient per unit of food eaten. I ultimately let this pseudoscorpion outside, but on reflection I wish I had kept it inside instead. The reason is that it seems more possible to completely eliminate prey bug populations indoors, and if a prey population is eliminated, it may be more likely that bacteria eat the prey's food instead whether in the house or in an anaerobic landfill, where house dust and organic material may eventually end up. In contrast, it's unlikely the pseudoscorpion would eliminate prey populations outside. 